So it's been about four days since I've last done a video on this rack, and today I'll be installing ESXi on my R2 Ten2. So I've been fiddling around with Hyper-V and using my network card for the virtual machines. I'm going to be hosting some VPSs and with some help with Adam over at Home Lab. But first, I need to put it on the USB drive, which I'll do now. So to download ESXi, all you need to do is you go to the uh, VMware website, VMware UK, and you go to downloads and free product downloads and sphere. The sphere serif C. The sphere. Now, ESXi is under sphere. The sphere. So it looks like I need to make an account. So I'll do that quickly and be back. I'm now logged in, got my account, and 250 megabytes in size. Uh, this site last updated in uh, April. 2nd of April. So I'm just going to manually download the ISO. We should be done. So to put ESXi on my USB stick, I'm going to put it into my computer. And there's nothing on there because I've just formatted it. And all you need to do is you need to go to uh, Rufus and download the client. Okay, so looks like Rufus has done putting the files in the drive. I'm just going to eject the USB drive and put it in my server. So to do this, it requires me to unplug everything on the back. Oh, that should slide out. Okay, so I'm just going to unlock it. So the thing with these servers is that is that you can put the USB drive on the on the inside because they have these USB USB ports on the inside. So we're going to be using that to put the SXI on the system. So I'm simply going to put start it, going to lock, and put it back in the rack. I'll plug the cables in. So the thing with my rack is that I can it's, it's on wheels. So I can just move it about. Yeah, I did some cable management with um, zip ties. So I'll I'll plug you back in. So I might look into getting a managed switch soon. So I'll be able to figure out how to use VLAN integration. Um, so we have to put my VMs and my local network on a different VLAN so they're physically separated with software. Um, so if so if any of my um, VMs um, had a security vulnerability then so if there's a security vulnerability in the VMs then my network is going to be separated so they won't attack my internal network. And also the people that know um, Dell servers is that they have the iJack card. So instead of using a keyboard mouse and on a monitor, a KVM, um, like a, a rack mounted monitor, so be able to access the server through a web GUI like a KVM, but over the network. So you wouldn't have to have multiple keyboard mouses hooked up to different servers when you need to manage them at once. So back on the PC, I'm just going to log into the iDRAC and do this by going to uh, the IP address that you set up or if you don't know the IP address then you can um, log into your router and then you can find out which um, devices are on the network and what IP address they have assigned to them. So sometimes the iDRAC takes a while to load. Um, it, it's Sometimes the iDRAC likes to fail when it's loading the web page. I know it's, it's a bit slow. Um, so I'm just going to log in. 
Well, that was like that. It's not even loading, so I had to press F5 a few times for it to load properly. Come on. Come on, load. Nope, gone away. Nope. Nope. Virtual console preview. There we go. <sighs> I would hate that if that was if that was when my website and it was loading like that. Jesus. So um, you need to have Java installed and you need to have the RC4 disabled in the config file. So all you need to go to is Notepad and run as administrator. Then once you've done that, you like to, you need to open the file file open and go to your C drive and, and locate where Java is installed. Java, you go to lib, then you go to security and then java.security. Open that lineup and you go near to the bottom of the page and you find this line, or if you do control left, find and then RC4. So all you need to do is to find RC4 and see how I've, I've removed it from the uncommented line. And because the iDRAC KVM um, interface is using an old standard for VNC or whatever uh, um, the K KVM software uses. And Java, they don't support it anymore. So if you download Java, you have to remove this, otherwise you get an error. So I'm just going to click on launch and it gives me a JNLP file. And because I don't have the Chrome extension, I have to remove the weird information it adds to the file. And I can simply just open it up. It loads up Java. Continue. So I download it from the server. I accept the risk. Run. And there we go. So this is the software that you use to control the server. I can turn on the system. I can um, I can put macros, like control delete, that's how I do it. And you can also launch virtual media that allows you to add disk images and install operating systems without using a CD drive or a USB, or a USB stick on the server. So Adam, a member of the HomeLab SH Discord server, mentioned that the install USB stick of ESXi, the one that we made a few minutes ago, can also be used as the boot USB drive. So now I'm going to go, and, go into power and power on the system. You can hear it powered up behind me. So I'm just going to let it to load. I'm simply going to click F11 to boot off the USB drive. So that is my internal Ethernet port. So F11 boot manager. Just going to enter that. The fans ramping up slowly. It's not as hot today. And today is the uh, 4th of June, which maybe this video might be up tonight. I don't know. There we go. So uh, boot mode, UEFI, I like to have that. Um, and it says Intel and USB disk one, cruiser glide. That's the USB that I have. And click on enter. And then we're now loading on the ESXi installer. So I'm going to zoom past this now and get to the user interface on the website.
Okay, so ESXi is finished installing. Now I'm going to press enter to reboot. For some reason that popped out my CD drive, but there's nothing in there. What? Don't you come back out at me again. So thanks for watching, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.